Welcome back. This is the second video in the Introduction to Arduino self-paced workshop. If you missed the previous video, navigate to our Canvas page and start with the Introduction to Arduino Part 1. In our previous lesson, I introduced the Arduino platform and discussed the instructions in a piece of code. But in this video, we're going to be building our own code and loading it onto an Arduino Uno and using some basic breadboarding components, build a circuit. I hope you remember everything from our last video, because now it's your turn. First, let's get acquainted with the IDE, though. The Integrated Development Environment is a place where all of the lines of code go, as well as the settings you need to put your hardware together. The main part of this IDE is called your sketch. This is Arduino's name for the blank canvas that your code is written on. If you've used Arduino before, Arduino might automatically open the sketch you were previously working on, so make sure to open up a new one. To do so, Navigate to your file menu bar and select New. The next most important setup aspect is in your Tools menu. Here you designate what type of board you are programming and where that board is plugged into your computer. For our workshop, we'll be using the Arduino Uno or Genuino Uno. Next, select the port that your device is plugged into. Plug in your board and see what populates in the list. If nothing populates, try and plugging it at the USB end and plugging it back in. If you're working with an Apple device, you might be looking for a name that has USB serial in it. Next, the compile button called verify. It runs through your code to see if you have all of your syntax correct. It won't tell you if your code will function properly, just that it is indeed written with the language the computer understands. Last, the upload button. Pushing this compiles your code and it's sent to the Arduino over USB. Either you will get an error or a notification of a successful upload. Errors will be listed in the black box beneath your sketch space. Go ahead and upload a blank sketch to your Arduino and make sure that everything is talking, as well as to wipe any previous sketch from the Uno. If this doesn't work, try restarting your computer, as pending updates affect USB ports on your computer most generally. Okay, now it's your turn. I want you to take a moment using the commands we talked through in the previous video to do all of the instructions listed on the left. In the setup, define the mode of pin 13. In the loop, write a high signal to pin 13, delay two seconds, write a low signal to pin 13, then delay a half second. As a reminder, some very useful commands are void setup, pin mode, void loop, digital write, delay, and in general, don't forget about your semicolons. Remember, we aren't using any parts yet, just the Arduino. If you need a challenge, see if you can adjust the tempo of your code to blink like a heartbeat and then blink Morse code for SOS. Short, 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 long, 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 short, short, short. When you're ready, we'll move on to the next exercise. Follow along as I build the code you just did in the Arduino IDE. I start by putting comments in my code, showing the instructions from the previous slide before writing the line of code that will satisfy them. First, we need to set up the mode of pin 13 to be an output. The appropriate instruction is pin mode, which takes the parameters pin and mode. Take care to be certain you're using a semicolon to end all of your instructions. All of the following code now belongs in the loop function of this Arduino script. I do the same thing by writing a comment telling me what I need to do, and then I write the instruction associated with that comment. Digital, capital W in right, pin 13 is the parameter, and high is the state. Next, we include the delay, and remember that delay works in milliseconds, so you end up with 2,000 milliseconds in order to accomplish a two-second delay. Finally, write the same pin 13 low, and delay for half a second. Once you're satisfied with your code, you need to verify that you have written it correctly. It will probably ask you to save your code. I always choose to, but you can select cancel and then it will just compile without. Whether you choose to save or cancel, the code will begin to compile. If each line was written correctly, then the message area, the bottom left, will show compiling. And once the green progress bar finishes up, the message area should read done compiling. In the event the code does not compile correctly, 
an error will show up in your message area and a detailed description will appear in the text console or black box beneath it. If everything runs smoothly, you should see a number of statistics about storage. Once compiled, plug your Arduino into your computer and double check that you've selected the correct port. Press the upload button and it should go through the process of compiling, then uploading the code over USB. During upload, the Arduino should blink on the LEDs labeled TX et RX. That way you know if it's communicating with the computer. Once you see the done uploading in the message area, your LED attached to pin 13, labeled L, should blink. Now that you've made the Arduino blink on the onboard LED, let's talk through some common errors that you may have encountered. In this code, we've placed these errors. See if you can spot them all. Did you find them? The first one I noticed is the pin mode instruction. The pin mode instruction requires two things, a physical pin and either input or output. You see the word pin is here, but no declaration of what pin means. This alone will throw an error. But right afterwards, the instruction output is not the Arduino teal color, like low is in the loop. That means that Arduino won't recognize it as the same instruction as output in all caps. Make sure you double check that the case of your code is correct. In the loop, the first line of digital write should have the pin and the desired state of the pin. While one is considered on, it doesn't actually work to put a one in the state parameter for this function. You must either place a high or a low and make sure that it's all in uppercase. The next line is a delay and it's of two seconds. Do you see anything wrong? If you say semicolon, you are correct. It is missing the, the period at the end of its statement. Without it, the computer will try to run both the delay and the following command to digital write at the same time, which isn't possible. Make sure to include a semicolon after every completed instruction. Do you see anything else that might be incorrect? If you say too many semicolons after digital write low command, that's a good eye, and you're correct to think it doesn't look right. But in reality, the computer is going to look at that and say, you want me to digital write 13 low, then not do anything, and then not do anything, and then not do anything. <laughs> It'll move on to the next command with no problem. While it doesn't look nice, it won't actually throw any errors. The last thing you likely might have come across was that the delay is split onto two separate lines. Arduino treats white space as something to ignore, so the Arduino really only sees delay 100 semicolon all as a single statement. Spacing and carriage returns don't change the way the code is read. If you have a messy script, you can always select all of your text using Control A on Windows devices or Command A on Mac and format using Control F or Command F. This should adjust all of your indents and brackets to be consistently aligned. Now that you've made the onboard LED blink, it's time to set up physical components to be connected to your Arduino. These components are the LED, resistor, jumper wires, and a breadboard. The LED has polarity, meaning it only permits energy to flow in one direction. The longer leg is known as the anode, the shorter, the cathode. The cathode also has a notch out of the round casing on the LED. Current flows in a diode from anode to cathode, so the anode is the positive side and the cathode is the negative side. The resistor is a device that limits the flow of electricity. It resists the flow of electrons. In this example, we're using an orange-orange-brown resistor, which translates to 330 ohms, but a 220 ohm resistor is also acceptable, colored red-red-brown. Jumper wires are just wires with convenient connectors on the end. The breadboard, however, let's take a closer look at that one. The breadboard is an organizational tool. You put the leads of your components into the holes of the breadboard and they'll remain secured in their spot until you're ready for more. You may recall if you've already taken our circuits workshop how it's arranged, but let's take a look at the inside. The part you see is just a plastic shell. Beneath that shell are just metal pins. They act like springs which grab and hold onto your component while you place others. The way they're oriented help you make multiple connections without crowding your circuit with wires. The middle section is usually where your components would be arranged. There are two columns of 30 individual rows, meaning you have 60 unique connection points. 
Each separate row has five holes that you can put the metal legs of your components into. The two outside columns are called rails, and they are generally used for powering and grounding the breadboard. One usually has a red line with a positive symbol, and the other usually a black line, sometimes blue, with a negative symbol. So let's put it all together. Remember, always unplug your Arduino from power when making any changes to your circuit. This is to protect both you and your devices. Here, you see both the components on a breadboard and a schematic drawing of the circuit. Arrange your resistor so that the leads go into two different rows on the breadboard, and the LED so that its legs go into two different rows as well. Reading our schematic, we have a gray tag at the top, which is connected to the positive side of the symbol for an LED. The negative side of the symbol for the LED connects to one lead on the resistor. The other lead on the resistor connects to the symbol for ground. Physically, our first connection is the black wire between resistor and ground. We use black because it is a standard in color coding. Black for anything ground, red for anything power. So, select a colored jumper to go between the LED and resistor, and another color to connect the LED to its signal line. If your circuit is hooked up to correctly, then it should blink as soon as you plug in your Arduino. Take this time to assemble your circuit. If you'd like a challenge, see if you can blink two LEDs. An even greater challenge? Change your code to see if you can blink them faster and faster. You're welcome to follow along as I assemble this LED circuit on my breadboard to attach to my Arduino. First, this is the LED that we'll be attaching. It has a resistor and a slew of jumper wires. Now, my breadboard. I'm going to select any two rows and slide the leads of the resistor firmly into the breadboard contacts. Next, we need to place the LED. Keep in mind the LEDs have polarity. Energy can only flow one direction. Referencing our schematic, we know the short lead or the negative side of the LED should connect to one side of the resistor. Finally, we need to connect our circuit back to our Arduino. I'm going to use a black jumper cable to go to the negative side of the resistor and a blue jumper cable to go to the positive side of the LED. Bringing our Arduino back into the picture, I can connect the jumper in the same row as the LED to pin 13 on the Arduino. Next, the black jumper needs to be connected to ground on the Arduino to complete the circuit. Plug in the Arduino, and if it blinks, great job! If not, recheck the onboard LED labeled L next to your pin 13 on your Arduino. If that's still blinking, you should double check the hookups on your breadboard. If that indicator light is not blinking like it was before, unplug your Arduino and make sure you have power and ground wires separate. Double check that the on light also illuminates when you plug in your Arduino. Now that we've had a look at the physical hardware, let's discuss some of the hiccups you might have encountered. You can choose to do this exercise with me by using the copy and tinker button underneath this design. Open it up and let's get going. The topmost LED is our baseline case. It's a correctly hooked up LED, both hardware and software. The LED beneath it is on, but it's very dim. Do you notice anything different between its circuit and the one above it? That's right, the resistor has a different color band. In this case, the resistor used is a 10,000 ohm resistor, over three times the value in the previous correct circuit. This resistor is reducing the current flow to the LED so much that it doesn't have enough to properly light. So our first case for a dim LED is an incorrect resistor value. Now, let's look at the next case. Do you see anything physically different between this and the first circuit? No? I agree. That suggests to me that it must be the code. The code used to light the LED is shown on the right. Do you see anything missing? In the setup, the pin mode has been grayed out. This means that the software is ignoring the command which sets the hardware up to provide power to the LED. Without the command pin mode, the LED has a similar problem as the circuit with too high of a resistor value. The hardware doesn't provide enough current to properly light the LED. By uncommenting the pin mode command, the LED will light up correctly. Let's look at the next circuit. 
Do you see anything different? This is a sneaky change, but the power and ground are swapped. Remember, the LED only permits flow of current in one direction. Putting power in the ground spot and ground in the power spot, there's no light whatsoever from the LED. It is very common to see an LED placed backwards. So if you're getting no light at all, double check the polarity. Now on to our last circuit. Notice anything? The light is much brighter than our base case. In this diagram, you see a little exclamation point next to it. The software is trying to help you out. It says there's too much current for the LED. Not so much that it's going to immediately explode, but enough that the LED will degrade significantly faster than its protected counterparts. All in all, making sure an LED behaves as you expect can be tricky, but following these checks, resistor value, code, circuit orientation, you can generally find any problem with a misbehaving circuit. Completing this exercise brings us to the end of this second Arduino introductory workshop video. Now that you understand outputs, why don't you join me in the next video where we'll go through inputs.